Hello vlog lovers, welcome to another edition of Epic Vlogs, the Super Hermit here, of course. I just want to do a vlog, probably a little bit longer one today, about the top 10 reasons that people still support the Coney 2012 movement. Now, I did a blog post yesterday, the top 10 reasons the Coney 2012 haters point out, so today I want to do the top 10 reasons that people still support the Coney 2012 movement. Now, this might be a little bit longer than yesterday's post, just bear with me and I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. Number one, the Invisible Children Foundation is not a charity in the sense that they are delivering food and shoes to the people of Uganda. Rather, they are an awareness organization that aims to shed light on the situations in Africa, particularly the displaced children and child soldiers. In this, they have succeeded, and there is nothing wrong with covering your expenses and making a living, i.e. selling bracelets and action packs. And more than this, many people would want those things, even if the Invisible Children Foundation were not offering them. So really, it's just smart business on their part. And if you make your living by bringing awareness to atrocities that were going unnoticed by the rest of the world, is that a bad thing? Plus, any controversy that they're enduring was brought on by themselves. As a nonprofit, all of their books are on public record, and they know this. As for their books, making movies and traveling around the world is not cheap. Neither is payroll. Even though one of their goals is to do good, it's still a business. It's how they make their living. Living, meaning that one, meaning the ones running it still need to be able to pay for their kids' braces and education. And that's what this is all about. The kids. The filmmaker, number two. The filmmakers are aware that Coney hasn't been active in Uganda since 2006. Is that a long time ago? Think about it. A six-year-old taking this place or orphan in 2006 would be 12 years old now. A seven-year-old would be 13, and so on. With nowhere to live, no one to help them, and very few ways to make money. The Ugandan authorities themselves, while claiming that the Coney 2012 video is misleading because Coney is not active there anymore and that they do not have a problem with child soldiers, still acknowledges that they have a serious problem with child prostitution. This is a direct result of the multitude of displaced children, many former child soldiers, that are still suffering from the endless nightmare that they were born into. These children are referred to as invisible for a reason, because after only six years, their own country wants to claim that Coney's reign of terror is over, and in fact, never even existed as depicted in the Coney 2012 film. But what about the displaced children? Number three. The filmmakers know that the film contains slight inaccuracies and exaggerations for cinematic effect. They are, after all, filmmakers and endeavored to make a film that would appeal to our emotions, not so much our brains. Their goal was to provoke a response that would make us care about the displaced children in Africa, not to ed educate us about the ins and outs of African history, and understood that a central bad guy was key. They could not make the president of Uganda the target of the campaign, as much as he would deserve it because his regime is in power right now and could make any future humanitarian work for the organization very difficult. As ugly as this concept is, that's politics. So they chose a bad guy who at best is responsible for the abductions of thousands of children and the murder of thousands of people. Although the president of Uganda himself is surely responsible for much, if not all, of the turmoil that spawned the LRA and led to the displacement of millions of Africans, many of them children, the filmmakers hoped that the Coney 2012 movement would shed light on the children, regardless of who caused the situation. Just because they went along with the laws and rules of the ones in power right now and played nice with them, i.e. posing in pictures with them, does not mean that they were naive to the reality of the situation. Just the opposite. They understood and are doing the best that they can to walk a fine line between shedding light on the children and outright laying the blame at the president of Uganda's feet. But if you, like many of the Coney 2012 activists, are becoming aware of the discrepancies between the story that was told and the truth that the president of Uganda himself is responsible for much, if not all, of the horrors we were shown, then I think it's safe to say that the filmmakers did their job. Number four, Africa's problems haven't been only African problems since Britain became, shall we say, involved in their affairs back in the 1600s. 
All of Africa's miseries cannot be attributed, attributed to the African people, but also to the British and other powers that be influences over the years. Even today, you would be hard pressed to find a conflict anywhere in the world where the arms are not supplied by one or more of the superpowers who themselves are influenced by the richest people in the world, making actual borders a thing that has meaning only to the people, not their rulers who globe trot at will. These kinds of policies that cause conflicts and then exploit them are only possible because the people are not aware of the level of deception that is afoot or the power they themselves wield. Together we can breach the smoke screen and pierce the illusion, but not if we lose sight of the goal. And the goal of the 2012 movement, the Coney 2012 movement, is as I see it, the children. Become aware of the displaced children in Africa so they are not invisible to us or anyone else who cannot see that their pain is just something that the entire world should do something about, including their own government. Number five, becoming aware of the multitude of problems in Africa, the displaced children, and the idea of interconnectedness does not mean that you agree with everything that the filmmakers do. Who agrees with anyone 100%? It does not mean that you support the invasion and occupation of Uganda or any part of Africa, unless you do. Just because the film brought awareness to the issues that you didn't know about before does not mean that you were a slave to the film or, that the, or the Coney 2012 movement. I understand that the film called for the arrest of Coney and the use of military power, but that doesn't mean that that's what you were calling for. Personally, I'm calling for more awareness to the issues surrounding the displaced children and help for them, including food, shelter, clothing, medical attention, and education, if they want it. I'm not sure if the military needs to be involved at all for these to be provided to the children who need them, but the truth is I'm not an expert on Africa. Very few of us are, and I believe that is why the video was structured the way it was, and appealing to the things that I could understand, like, what if my child was suffering? Number six, it may very well be true that there is oil in Africa amongst other veins, two billion barrels of it along the Congo-Ugandan border under Lake Albert, but that has absolutely nothing to do with the kids. All of the things that the Coney 2012 haters say could be true, and as long as there are displaced children in Africa that need our help, then the point of the Coney 2012 films remains intact. The point being that light needs to be shed on the displaced children and all of the causes thereof. Number 7. The difference between a military mission and a humanitarian one is simple. A military mission is decided upon by the interest of the government and its holding slash allies, meaning risk versus reward. What will they get out of it? But a humanitarian mission is decided on by the people, who through their collective concern for their fellow man, woman, and child causes a reaction by the government and its holding slash allies or a reaction of the people to personally do something. The goal of the Coney 2012 mission, as stated in the film, is to stop the possible recalling of the already deployed 100 military advisors from their mission to find Coney. Being that the ultimate goal, aid and safety for the displaced children of Africa, is a humanitarian effort, the government support can be pulled at any time. Why do they even want to catch Coney as opposed to just helping the displaced children? I think that this is symbolic for the job not being done until all of the causes of the child soldiers and displaced children are found. Those causes are not limited to Joseph Coney, and it is, it is insulting to suggest that the Coney 2012 supporters do not understand this. The Ugandan government and possibly our own government as well as others may be to blame for many atrocities committed in Africa, but the kids are not to blame, and it's the displaced children that we want to help. Number 8. Anywhere there are resources to be plundered, quick-thinking men and women will find a way to get a piece of the pie. I do not doubt that there are many such resources to be had in Africa, and sure as friends and money go together, the U.S. already has its eye on the pie. But again, this has nothing to do with the kids, unless you count using that as an excuse to get to the pie. But even if that's true, the issue remains. Displaced children. Number 9. The Coney 2012 haters are fond of citing that the LRA is not 30,000 strong, but rather a few hundred at best, and that the number 30,000 actually represents the number of children abducted during the last 25 years of Coney's reign that was brought on by the rule of President of Uganda, Yauri Museveni. Museveni. 
Do I even need to make a point here, or have they pretty much done that for me? 30,000 actually represents the number of children abducted. Number 10, last but not least, this one is important and one of the more complex issues. Why does the Coney 2012 film not mention the Ugandan president, Yauri Museveni, who is arguably responsible for many more crimes than Coney? As I have already explained, this is due to politics. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, and Museveni is already in power right now. The filmmakers cannot very well make the president of Uganda the target of a campaign to overthrow him in an attempt to help the children. That would not make things better for the children and would make future films shot in Uganda almost impossible to make. However, making Coney, Coney a target wouldn't hurt anyone except for Coney, and I'm okay with that and would bring attention to the Ugandan children and displaced children throughout the African regions. Along with this attention would come a closer inspection and the truth that although the film says Uganda and Kony, what they really mean is Uganda, Congo, Sudan, Kony, and Museveni 2012. Because the, collection, because the conflicts in these regions, the rulers in these areas are causing the deaths of millions of people and the displacement of hundreds of thousands of children. Not to mention the ones who they abduct and make child soldiers, or the ones that volunteer willingly because they have nowhere else to go. If shady charities, oil, and rare precious metals are a part of this, then that's just one more thing that has come to light because of the Coney 2012 film and the Coney 2012 movement. In conclusion, I would just like to end this by saying that the United States government as well as the Ugandan government were already looking for Kony and troops had already been sent by the U.S. to Africa on a mission to find him, although as advisors. The Kony 2012 film had nothing to do with this. He is wanted for war crimes and it is well known that he has abducted thousands of kids and murdered thousands of people. The Ugandan government acknowledges this and the fact that there are a great number of displaced children, many of which have turned to prostitution. These are the kids that need our support. That is what Coney 2012 means to me. Not shady charities, not oil or rare precious metals, nor the invasion and occupation of yet another country, but humanitarian aid to the children of Africa, displaced by conflicts, wars, and the actions of Coney, Museveni, and others. Thank you.